Terramaster F2 2023 is their latest model and when we're taking into consideration the entry-level NAS uh, segment and uh, this is two bay NAS which comes with two bays of course and it comes in a support with uh, native multi-gig connections so this means that it has two RJ45 that each go up to 2.5 gigabits per second which is of course outstanding and then we have the latest Terramaster operating system which with short name goes by the name of TOS version 5. Now their previous model the F2 2021 and F2 2020 and the original one F2 210 all use gigabit so this is the difference where you get here two RJ45 with 2.5 gigabits this one these ones all have a gigabit connection also to top it all the f2 uh, 223 features two usb 3.2 generation 2 10 gigabits per second ports now it looks identical to the f2 210 and has a fan sticking out a bit from the back side but that isn't uh, that much important because you won't be seeing that fan at all to be honest with all the connections mentioned above it also has an hdmi port for direct media streaming it comes also with drive trays with latches that allow tool-less swap or install of the hard drives. You do need to push them fully so that the hard drives connect back to the PCB board and that's it. Unfortunately, the base don't have a security lock. So this goes against the accidental removal, so place the NAS somewhere safe out of reach for unwanted removal of the HDDs. To assemble everything, basically we already have hard drives right here, so here we go. I'm just going to show you quickly how it's done. Uh, you have the hard drive freed up, right? So this is how you have it. The latches are already attached to the base. You just pull out the bay from the F2223, place the hard drive inside, use the latch. You have an arrow indicating which side it goes, so the arrow goes to the front side of the hard drive it makes a click and the other one as well placing it at the back here we go and that's it after that you just slide in your hard drive and that's all there is to it after that you connect your LAN cable and power supply cable to the power and press the power button now for the hardware specification, it has Intel Celeron N4505 dual core 2.0 GHz that maxes out at 2.9 GHz. Memory is 4 GB but it's upgradable up to 32 via 2 slots. So the hard drives are hot swappable which is outstanding, it supports Wake on LAN or one. You can schedule the power on off, it supports Samba, AFP, NFS, FTP and web dev file protocols. Maximum storage capacity, now this is interesting, is 40 terabytes. So basically you can put two hard drives with capacity at 20 terabytes. Maximum local user accounts is uh, 2048 and the maximum share folder is 512. It supports uh, write types uh, single, just a bunch of disk, write zero, write one. And when you install the TOS operational system, uh, you can also place the T-RAID instead of RAID1, for instance. Now, what is T-RAID? It, it has functions such as automatic combination of disk space, hard disk failure redundancy protection, and automatic capacity expansion. All these functions uh, configuration will be automatically completed according to the properties of the hard drives uh, instead of manual configuration by yourself. To make it work, you need to go to their uh, website, so start.terra-master.com and just follow the instructions. After a few seconds, the software will find the NAS on your network. The wizard will walk you through the complete installation, so uh, you first uh, need to start with selecting your hard drives, where TNAS checks them for bad blocks. It says it takes up to 3 to 10 minutes, but it was done under those 3 minutes, so you don't have to worry about that. I guess it all depends on the hard drives. A uh, warning pops up that all data will be deleted, where if you wish to continue, you need to accept that. Advice, always back up your files if you're using some old hard drives or used hard drives, it doesn't matter. Uh, then the best practice is to install the TOS system online. 
Again, it says 10 minutes, but in my scenario, it took less than four. But then again, it comes to the point of the hard drives. And after that, you'll have to wait additional five minutes for the restart. Smart move from TerraMaster is automatically disabling the root user where it forces you to create your own username and password. Verification code is sent to your email and it literally arrives in a couple of seconds unless of course you type the wrong email. Uh, then it is time to create your storage pool. Four options are shown as T-RAID, uh, just a bunch of disk, write zero and write one where it automatically shows you the option of free space, redundancy and wasted space. Only if the hard drives are different sizes when it comes to wasted space. Then we choose the file system. You have BTFRS where you could uh, use it for good scalability and single files up to 16 terabytes. And the second file system is EXT4. New warning pops up just in case that all files will be deleted from the hard drive. Again, remember to back up your files. This is most important. As it says, finally, uh, but to be honest, it, it isn't that long. You have all the information and dynamic IP address for accessing your TerraMaster F2223. After confirming everything that you have copied the data, you have to agree with the end user license agreement and it takes you to TOS version 5, where it starts the longest process of them all. So apparently in my situation, I left it overnight, so I don't know exactly how long it took but synchronizing the storage pool you created. In the meantime, you can actually do what you wish installing additional apps. TOS 5 is a robust system, something similar to Synology DSM and has a web-based user interface resembling to the native operating system. The cool thing is that you can use multiple applications at the same time and use the control panel to configure your router. With the application center, you can install more apps on your NAS as you wish and as you need basically, right? Something else that is worth mentioning, TOS 5 now supports domain um, basically LDAP integration which allows the NAS to be a part of a business environment with a domain controller. This is a outstanding feature and honestly about time because this way more small businesses using domains can finally utilize the F2223 in their ecosystem and basically their domain. So as for the apps, you currently have 59 different apps ranging from security, business backup, multimedia and development tools. Of those 59, 8 are still in beta stage. Depending on your personal preferences, you'll choose which ones are suitable for you, but a couple of them are worth mentioning. So Multimedia Server, which turns your TNAS into a multimedia service center for streaming multimedia content. Then Snapshot, which is BTRFS file system based uh, disaster recovery tool. Then Transmission, which allows users to download BitTorrent files without needing to have their PC on. Then Terra Search to help finding required information within the stores of data, which is handy because before we didn't have that in TOS 5, now we actually do, which is really handy. And uh, finally, Terra Sync, which includes server and client apps that allows syncing and backing up data on multiple clients which for, as I stated, uh, in the um, small um, businesses that use domains and stuff like that could be really helpful. Some other apps that might come in handy for other of you that have different preferences is something like VirtualBox, WordPress, uh, Java Virtual Machines and others. But I do have to say, um, as, I always, as I always say and I already mentioned it, it's all up to personal preferences. Now for the speeds, I used uh, two Seagate Ironwolf Pro 4 terabytes, and they're both uh, placed in RAID 1, so basically I only have, only have uh, 4 terabytes of storage and 4 terabytes of backup, so eventually when one hard drive crashes or it stops working, the other one has all the data, so basically all you need to do is find another 4 terabyte hard drive and place it inside so it synchronizes them both and then you're good to go with the backup again. But when we're talking about the speeds, I just wanted to mention the hard drives that I used. So usually what I see is people using SSDs in these benchmarks and it sometimes it does make sense because of the 2.5 gigabit per second LAN ports that you have at the back, but whatever, I use hard drives. So write speed uh, with 2.5 gigabit per second LAN port connected, only one. We have write one, maximum was 130 megabytes per second. 
uh, with uh, transferring 19.1 gigabytes file. Uh, the average speed was 107 megabytes per second. The read speeds, the same configuration where we're talking hard drives, connection, and all the other stuff, the maximum speed went up to 106 megabytes per second, but the average was 87 megabytes per second because it goes literally everywhere. So yeah, there's that. I didn't use RAID 1, I used uh, T-RAID, so just to clarify that part as well, but I don't think there's any difference except for the uh, possibility to use uh, varieties, well, different sizes of hard drives in T-RAID compared to RAID 1. To conclude, I would... Uh, say great speed at load noise and it's being really cool the fan isn't heard whatsoever if you want affordable yet fast nas this is it two built-in 2.5 gigabit per second multi-gig ports tos5 is a great advantage compared to the previous version with loads of new implementations and as stated earlier affordable cool and quiet nas something you need to take into consideration as well some apps need more work on them without a doubt plus no IP camera support, which for some of you guys would, I would think it would be really good to have in your, for instance, business or anything that you uh, have. What is also important to mention, and uh, I had to tear it apart just to show you. So the first DDR4 slot is right here uh, beneath this uh, complete cage. You have four screws to remove the hard drive cage and you need four more screws here at the back to remove the PCB board that actually connects the hard drives. This ain't a PCB board actually. And then at the bottom where you have the additional DDR4 slot, uh, you have two M.2 SSD uh, slots, 2280, so you can go with the shorter ones, which accelerates SSD caching and double the storage efficiency of uh, disk arrays. So taking everything into consideration, as already stated, it's uh, quite an outstanding piece of hardware uh, when we're talking about some sort of an entry level, but still has loads of connections, loads of uh, possibilities to uh, upgrade it, to say as such. And I would say big thumbs up to TerraMaster for the F223 uh, uh, compared to the past generation of their entry-level uh, two-bay NAS systems. The link for the uh, TerraMaster F223 is in the description below, so you can check out the prices and everything that you need in additional information. And that'll be all for today. Thank you for watching, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and click the notification bell as well so you don't miss any future content. Thanks for watching again. See you next time. Bye-bye.